Okay. Today's daf is daf Bezos Hashem, daf Ches, and in Mesech the Gitten, and we're going to start from daf daf Zion Omid Beis Panuchada. It's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven lines from the bottom. Okay. Why do you get from Dini Shayam to Shiyai Mevahun and Echsim Mevahun and Echsim? That's right. So there. This I learned. Yeah, Tonechada. In one Braisa we learned, Hamevi get Besvina. If someone is in Eretz, is on a boat, in a ship, and he writes a get. So, Kamevi be Eretz Yisrael. It's as if he wrote it in Eretz Yisrael. And just like you know, when you write a get in Eretz Yisrael, and you, let's say you send it from Tel Aviv to Bnei Brak, you don't have to say Befani Nechta, Befani Nechta. So if you write it on a boat, and you get off the boat, you, and you bring it to Eretz Yisrael, you don't have to say Befani Nechta, Befani Nechta. That's, yeah. that's, this is what one Braisa said then. Okay? So one Braisa says you write it a get on a boat, it's Kamevi Eretz Yisrael. The Tanya Ida, hi Lewis, we just began. We're two lot we're eleven lines from Zion of base. The Tanya Idah, we learned in another Brisa, Kimavi the Chutzlaritz. It's it's as if you wrote it in Chutzlaritz, which is, means as if you wrote it in, in Italy. Just like when you bring a get from Italy to Israel, the Mishnah says you, you have to say Fani Nachta Fani Nachta. So the Shliach has to say that. So also if you write it on a boat, you also have to say Bafani Nachtam Fani Nachta. So you have a a contradiction between two brises. How do you resolve these two brises? Amar Rabbi Yirmi, Rabbi Yirmi explained it. Loi kasha. Loi kasha means it's not difficult. Ha Rabbi Yehuda, ha Rabbanu. One brise is Rabbi Yehuda, and one brise is Rabbanu. Now the Gemara understands that where is this, where exactly is this boat? This boat is in a river in Eretz Yisrael. Call it, let's say, that it's on the Jordan River, okay? Now, the question is, when you write it on the boat, is it considered as if you're writing it on the ground of Israel? The Tanan we learned in the Mishnah. Let's say you have earth from Chutz Laretz that happens to be on the boat, and, it's, and it came to Eretz Yisrael. So let's say the boat is now in the Jordan River, and you plant a, 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 a tree on that boat, right? So the Mishnah, the Mishnah says, Chayev b'masa v'shviyaz. It's Chayev b'masa and shviyaz and shmita, because because the Rashi learns that the boat is made out of like earthenware boat. So therefore, where is the nourishment coming from? This plant, this like tree that you grew on the boat, it's coming from the ground, the seabed, the the ocean, the the river floor. Uh, so therefore, it's 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 although it's not touching the ground, it says as if it grew in Eretz Yisrael, and it's chayv v'masa v'shmita. Am um, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says, Amosai. When is this so? In other words, Rabbi Yehuda sometimes uses Amosai as to explain the Tanakhama. But here, he's saying, I totally disagree with you, Tanakhama. B'zman she'svina g'sheshes. Only if the ship was actually touching the ground, it was like stuck, grounded on the floor of the, of the Jordan River, then I agree that it'll be chayv v'masa v'shmita. But Aval Ein Hasavina Goishashis, let's say the ship is not touching the ground of the floor, it's floating. So then the Mishnah, the Mishnah, the Rabbi Huda says it's Potter, it's Potter. So now we have a re resolving for our uh, Styrus of Rises. According to Rabbi Huda, in order for you to be considered part of Eretz Raw in a boat, the ship has to be touching the ground of, of, of the seafloor. And therefore, Therefore, as long as it's floating, you're not considered part of Eretz Yisrael. So the first b'risa that says, the first b'risa, the Tanya Idach, the second b'risa that says, if you write again on a boat, you have to say, it's like Rabbi Yehuda, that as if you're on the ship, if you're on the ship, you are considered to be chutzlaretz, even though the river itself is located in Israel. The b'risa, that's the first b'risa, that's if you bring a if you bring a if you ride it on a boat and you bring it into Israel, it, you don't have to say befani nech van nechtav. That goes according to the shitas rabbanam. That once you're in the air, air space, the air, air space of Eretz Yisrael, even though you're not touching the ground, you're on water, you're floating on water. It's still considered part of Eretz Yisrael, and that will be the sheet of the Tanakama. First price is Tanakama. Second price is Rabbi Huda. Abaya Abaya says. 
I could say that both prices go according to Rabbi Huda. It's not difficult. The first price is talking about the ship is not touching the boat, it's not touching the floor. So therefore, it's considered to be, the second price is talking about when the ship is not touching the floor. And therefore, it's considered to be like Chutz Laretz. But Khan, the first price is Bizman Shasvina Goisheshes, when it is touching the floor. Remember, Rabbi Huda would agree that if the boat is touching the floor, whatever you plant in the boat is as if you planted it in Eretz Yisrael proper, it would be Chai Bamas of Shviz. So therefore, if the boat is, is, is touching the, the, the floor of the sea, so then that's considered part of Eretz Yisrael. And that's the first price they're talking about where uh, maybe Gepa Svina is maybe Eretz Yisrael, and therefore you don't have to say Ufari Nechta, Ufari Nechta. The Gemara says like this, Amr Abzeira, and here is like an open quote, I should say, uh, over here, which means that this is just a side point, not, not uh, talking about the two prices. Amr Abzeira, Abzeira has made a comment, Otsis Nokiv, if you have a flower pot that has nokuv, a, 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 a hole on the bottom, right? So Otsis is a flower pot that has a hole on the bottom. Amunach al-gabe yesedis, that's standing on pegs. So therefore, there's a direct airspace between the bottom of the flower pot and the, the ground of Israel. So banu l'machlekes Rabbi Huda Rabbonim. That would be the same machlekes with, with, between Rabbi Huda Rabbonim. Rabbi Huda holds, as long as you're not touching the ground of the floor, you're not considered to be part of Eretz Yisrael. So if you grow anything in that flower pot, it's part of from Trumas and Meisrus. Rabbanan would hold, no, uh, since there is a direct connect, there is an airspace, and there's a direct airspace between the flower pot and the ground, it would be considered part of Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, whatever is grown in that flower pot will be considered to be as if it was grown in Eretz Yisrael. That's what Rav Zera said. Amar Rava, Rava said, no, I could differentiate. Rav Yehuda and the Rabbanim were all talking about a boat. And Dilma, Lohi, I would say you got it, it's not so. Because At Khan, Loikoma Rav Yehuda. Over there, Rav Yehuda didn't say that it's not a part of Eretz Yisrael. Hossam over there is El Besvina, it's by a, a boat. A boat that's on water is not part of Israel. Here we go to Daf Chesem and Al, because Ho'asuya Livroyach, because it's it, it's always moving, and therefore because it's always moving, it's not considered part of Eretz Yisrael. Avo Otsu She'ena Osu Livroyach, but a flower pot that's suspended in space, and therefore it's not it's not moving around. Lloyd, maybe he would not say it's not part of Eretz Yisrael. Maybe he would agree that it is considered part of Eretz Yisrael, even though there's a there's a space in between the ground floor and where the flower pot is. But since it's stationary, it, Rabbi Yehuda would agree that it could be considered part of Eretz Yisrael, whatever is grown in the flower pot. Iname, I can say reverse. Rabban only said over there by a ship, uh, which is a ship is considered part of Eretz Yisrael, even though because there's water underneath the ship, but it's not oxygen, it's not airspace, the Leimafsik Avira. There's no airspace. It's the water and the boat and then the ground floor, but there's not an air, uh, 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 you know, an open space. The Maya, the Mavsik Abir, the Maya, Ki Aras Michti Dami. Since it's, you don't have an interruption of air, and so therefore the water is considered to be uh, a connection, like a, the water is considered like an extension of, of, the, of, the, of the ground. But a flower pot where there's total airspace, there's nothing in between the ground floor and where, and, and where the flower pot is, loy, maybe the Rabbanu will not say it's part of Eretz Yisrael. Maybe they will say it's considered to be Kutz Laaretz. So that, that uh, was close quote, and that was, that was uh, an, uh, an extension of the Machlekes of Yehuda Rabbanu. Rab Nachman by Yitzchak, Rab Nachman Yitzchak said he wants to get back to the original question. Our original question was: One brayzer says if you if you buy if you ride a, a a if you ride a get on a boat, then you have to say b'fani nechman nechdav. That's the second brayzer. The first brayzer says you don't have to say b'fani nechman nechdav. So how do you resolve those two brayzers? So Rab Nachman by Yitzchak says I have a third way to resolve the brayzers. First way was one's Rabbi Yudu Ramar Rabbanan. Or Abayah said both are Rabbanan. The third way is, If the boat 
was in Eretz Yisrael, there would be no argument that if you're on, let's say, the Jordan River, that's considered part of Eretz Yisrael. There's no argument between the two Bryces. If you're on a boat in the Jordan River or any river or Yom Kinneret, so therefore you write a, a, a get on that boat, on that river, no problem. You don't have to say Fani Nech Fani Nech. El Kli Pigi, when is the argument? Biyam HaGadol, on the great Mediterranean Sea. So I call your attention to a picture that I have on the screen, which basically is Israel. And what here on the, here on the, on the Western border of Israel is the Mediterranean Sea. But according to the Chachamim, the what's considered part, the, even a little bit into the ocean is considered part of Eretz Yisrael. You draw a line from Har Hermon, which is the Turi Amnoin, all the way down to Nachal Mitzrayim. That's how the part of Eretz Yisrael. So from here and, and or beyond is considered part of Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, if you have an island somewhere located just off the, the border, uh, off the beach of, of Eretz Yisrael, if you have a little piece of land, that's considered part of Eretz Yisrael. Beyond that line comes the Chachamim and say that is considered not part of Eretz Yisrael. So it's only land. The water is not considered part of Eretz Yisrael. And also, and also, it's beyond the line, is not considered part of Eretz Yisrael. This is the opinion of Tanakama. Comes along Rabbi Yehuda, and Rabbi Yehuda is this opinion. He holds, as you can see on the screen, that he, he draw, it's an amazing opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. His Israel, right, where I have an eye, that's Israel, and you draw a straight line from the top of Israel, a place called Kapluria, all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. And from the bottom, the Nachal Mitzrayim, the south part of Israel, you cross the whole Mediterranean Sea, all the way where it reaches the Atlantic Ocean. That's all considered part of Israel. You see, this is all considered part of Israel. Even the water is considered part of Israel. So that is the Machlech is between Rab Tanakama and Rabbi Huda. Therefore, you can resolve the Stiris of Rises. The Bryce is talking about, let's say he wrote it on a boat you wrote it on a boat. So according to the Tanakama, as long as you're not on an island, even though you're in, you're included in the boat, uh, even you're in the water, you're not part of Israel. Or if you wrote it on an island beyond the original, the, uh, um, the, beyond the vertical line, the diagonal line from Israel, that's not part of Israel. According to Rabbi Yehuda, the, the Israel really extends from, from, from Israel all the way basically to Europe. That's basically part of Israel, all the islands and waters. And therefore, if you write a boat from there, if you write it over there, you don't have to say before Nacht and Fani Nacht, because that's considered all part of Israel. Now you can hear it inside. The Tanya we learned to the Brisa. Ezeu Aretz Vezu Chutzlaretz. What's considered Eretz Israel? What's considered Chutzlaretz? Culture Shefeya Vyarimaturi Amnim Vilafnim Eretz Israel. If you draw that line, whatever on the in part of the line from Turi Amnoin, from the, that northern part of Israel, the northwest of Israel, to, to and inwards, as you draw the line north to south, is Eretz Yisrael, but beyond that, that straight line, is considered Chutz Laretz. So Hanis and Shabayam, the, only the islands that are within the line, as if there's a taut line drawn in, 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 uh, uh, around them, from Turi Amnon to Anachal Mitzrayim, in a chitl of them from that string in, inwards is Israel, Eretz Yisrael, and the chitl chutz is chutz Laret. So that is this picture over here, the first picture. Everything beyond this line is considered chutz Laret. Everything inside the line is considered Eretz Yisrael. Comes along Rabbi Yehuda, he says, no, Eretz Yisrael really extends all the way through Europe. Kolk, Shneged, Eretz Yisrael, Hareik, Eretz Yisrael, anything opposite Israel is considered Israel. Shanama Gul Yom, what is the western part of Israel? That's what the Pasuk says. What is the western part of Israel? It's the whole Mediterranean Sea. Ugvul Zed Yilachem. And that should be your that should be your border. Gul Yom, that is the western border of Israel. But if you have an island above the line or below the line, Raisin Kilit Khutma Tuakalaimikaplarivadyama Ikinayas. From Kaplaria to the to the Atlantic Ocean, so that's the second picture that that you draw a total line 
So whatever is considered within this line, within these two lines drawn to the Atlantic Ocean is Eretz Yisrael. These, these islands over here, uh, and the island, let's say, we have over here, on top of the bottom of those lines, are not part of Eretz Yisrael. So therefore, we have a, a result of our, 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 our stira. We're talking about uh, it's, it's, it's the location of where the boat is, is considered Israel according to Rabbi Yehuda, but not considered Israel according to Rabbi Anand. So Therefore, the price that says that you don't have to say funny and have goes according to Rabbi Yehuda. But the price that says you do have to is goes according to Rabbanan because the part of where the boat is is not considered part of Israel. Rabbi Yehuda has a very long extension of Israel. Now, how did Rabbi Yehuda know that he extend the Atlantic Ocean all the way down? Because it says Ugvu. It says twice in the Pasuk Ugvu. So we see that it's not just the Mediterranean. It's actually the Atlantic Ocean is considered to be part of the western border of Israel. So because you learn from the extra word Ugvu. Rabbana high gvul my over the lake. What did Rabbana need with that gvul? We boil it in the Nisan. We need it for the islands. That the islands, the without the extra word gvul, I don't know if I know the water is part of Israel, but what about the islands? So the islands inside that borderline is considered part of Eretz Israel. Rabbi Huda, I'm a, Rabbi Huda is Nisan like Tzrich and Kra. Rabbi Huda doesn't need a posik for the islands because the islands, it's the it's, it's the islands and the water is considered part of Israel. So I don't need an extra Pasuk for the islands. So, so therefore, therefore the Gvul teaches you, according to Rabbi Yehuda, that the, actually the, the Eretz Yisrael extends from the two points where Eretz Yisrael meet the, uh, the Mediterranean, straight lines directly into the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, new Gemara. Rabbi Meir Oyma Akai Eretz Yisrael. Now we're talking about Syria. Syria was an ear in Tanakh was captured by David and Melech long after Yeshua divided up Eretz Yisrael. And, and the reason why David and Melech captured Eretz Yisrael was to get tax revenue and expand the borders of Israel. But it never really took on totally like Eretz Yisrael. So they asked the question from Rabbi Abba. If someone sells his slave, he has a, he lives in Israel, and he sells his slave to to another uh, to another owner who lives in Syria. Now, if you sell your slave, you live in Israel, you sell your slave to somebody in America, the slave goes free, because it seems from Rashi that the slave has a mitzvah of Yitzhak Eretz Yisrael, and you are taking him to now forcing him to live in America. So that's a, uh, that's a disqualification of your ownership of the Evid. So if you do that, the Chazal knas you and uh, the Evid goes free. What happens if you sell an Evid to Syria? Well, isn't that Syria considered to be part of Israel? And therefore uh, you, 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 the Evid does not go free? Or is that as if you sold him to somebody who lives in Chus Laaretz? Amalehei, so Rabbi Chiyabar Abba answered his Talmidim, that's the Mishnah. Rab Meir Oimer, Rab Meir said, Akoi, the city of Akoi, is, is Karech Yisrael a Gittin. It has a din like Karech Yisrael a Gittin that you don't have to say to Farinech, Farinech, either they know Lishma or they can easily get into Karech Yisrael. Akai for sure is Chutz Laaretz. So Le Gittin N, for Gittin, it's considered part of Karech Yisrael, Rab Meir said, La Vodem Loi. For slavery, if you sell an Eva to Akoi, if you sell an Eva to Akoi, uh, Rab Meir said he would go free. So, so because despite it being so close, it's still not considered part of Eretz Yisrael. The Kolshkein Surya de Maracha Kotuva. Certainly, Surya, which is much further away than Akoi, uh, is not considered part is not considered part of Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, if you sell your slave to somebody who lives in Surya, it's as if you sold him to somebody who lives in Koslaritz, and he would go free. But nevertheless. It's really hard to understand, but Surya may be different than Akoi because if you plant in Surya, you have in Trumas and Meisters. Let's see what the Brisa says. Turn around on him. There are three ways Surya is like Eretz Yisrael and three ways where it's like Chutz Laaretz. First thing is Afar Atomic Chutz Laaretz, that the earth, we know that, that there's a, we've had this before, a concept before, that if you touch earth or you enter the airspace of Chutz Laaretz, you become Tmei Meis. Uh, you, the, the Chazal made a gzera that anytime you enter Chutz Laaretz, you automatically consider yourself a Tmei Meis. So whoever goes into Syria, is, it's, its earth is Tamei, as if you entered Chutz Laaretz. If you sell your slave to Syria, 
as if you sold him in Chutzlars. We just saw that before. But I maybe get Masuria. If you bring a get from Syria to Eretz Yisrael, it's Kamevi Mechutzlaretz. It's as if you brought it from Chutzlaretz and you would have to say Befani Nechtem, Befani Nechtem. So in these three ways, the Syria is considered like Chutzlaretz. Over Shloisher Eretz Yisrael, in three ways, it's it's like Eretz Yisrael. Chayeves B'masa V'shviz. It's, 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 if, you, if you live in Syria, you have to keep Maisris and you have to keep Shmita. Eretz Yisrael, as if you're living in Eretz Yisrael. If you want, there's a way to get into Eretz Yisrael uh, by being, but not becoming Tame. It's a way to get into Syria without becoming Tame, and you could do it that way. Well, that makes, you just told me, if you go into Syria, you become Tame. So how do you go into it when you, and, and remain un, un, uh, not Tame? You remain Tahar. So we'll see in the moment. If we buy a field in Syria, we go to Ahmed Bey's, it's as if you bought a, a, a field in the outskirts of Yerushalayim. So Syria is very much like Israel. If you want to buy an apartment, buy it in Syria, because it's as if you bought it, uh, an apartment somewhere in, in, in Yerushalayim. Syria is very similar to Eretz Yisrael. So we're going to explain those three things that it's similar to Eretz Yisrael. Why is it Chayav B'Maiser and Shemitah like Eretz Yisrael? Because Sovar, Ksimbish Yachot, Shmei Kibosh. The fact that David Melech captured Syria on his own, it wasn't like, you know, part of the initial campaign of Yeshua. It was a personal accomplishment of David Melech to capture Syria. So that's not, that's considered as if he annexed it to Eretz Yisrael and it has Kedushas Haaretz and therefore it's Chayev and Meis and Shemitah. Now, but it's still Tomei. But right to the Kodesh Lobetara, there's a way to go into it and not becoming Tomei, Nichnas. How? Well, Amrit, you said, you said, if you touch the ground and you go, Pashtus, you go into the airspace of, 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 of Syria, you become Tame. So how do you resolve that? Rashida Teva Midgal. If you go in, let's say, in an open chest, like a big chest, right? Or a big closet or a big box, and you enter into it, let's say, on a, on a, in a moving wagon. So the Tanya, we learned in the Brisa Nichnas, so I'm a Bashita Teva Migdal Rabbi Metamir of Yusuhuda Mitar. If you walked into another part of Chutz Lawrence, let's say you walked into Lebanon and, and in a box, so then Rabbi says you remain Tame. Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Huda Metahar. Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Huda says Yatar because you're in this protective uh, closet, so you don't become Tame, tame Mace. But Rabbi still says you're Tame. So, but but I feel the Rebbe, even according to Rebbe, Loika Matami Amen. Rebbe said that it's Tome when you go into this box, even in, despite you're in the box, you're still Tome in Eretz Amen because the fact is that even though it should be an oil, but it's a moving tent. And once it's moving, Rebbe, Rebbe, Rebbe holds, it's not considered a tent and it doesn't protect you from the oxygen of the Eretz Amen. So therefore, if you're in real Eretz Amen, if you're in Lebanon, let's say, you become Tome. The Gazral Gush of Alabira, because the, not only the ground is Tame in Eretz Amen, but also the airspace is Tame in Eretz Amen. Avo Surya, but Surya, Al Gusha Gazru, Al Abira, like Gazru. Surya, they were only Gazer on, the, on the, the ground itself, but not its airspace. So therefore, once you're going into, once you're protected by this like spaceship, well, or this box that's moving, so therefore, uh, you're not Tame if you go into Syria because only if you touch the ground of Syria or you move the earth of Syria, then you become Tame Mace, but not if you're in a protective box. So that's what it means. If you go into uh, Syria with this box, you're not but Tame. You don't become Tame. And then we learned in the Brisa that says, in what way is Syria like Israel? If you buy, if you purchase a field in Syria, it's as if you purchased in, in the outskirts of Yerushalayim. So what do I need to know that? Rav Shish explained, if the sale, if you could only purchase this, this, this land, this field in Syria on Shabbos, you're allowed to be Mechal Shabbos and write up the, the sale document on Shabbos because maybe the owner, let's say the Goyish owner is selling you a piece of land there, he's going to say, oh, after Shabbos, I'm going on a business trip and maybe he'll back out. So you're allowed to write the, the, write the document the sale document on Shabbos. So the Gemara asks, what do you mean? You're allowed to be Michal Shabbos? The Shabbos al Would you think that a person, a Jew, could be Michal Shabbos to purchase some land in, 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 Eretz, in Syria on Shabbos? And says the Gemara, it's like what Rav explained. 
You're allowed to tell the guy to write the document and, and he can do it on your behalf. If, you, if you're buying in Israel, you can do that. And if you're buying in Syria, you, you, you do that. You're not allowed to tell a guy to be Michal Shabbos for you. Telling a guy to cook you uh, an egg on Shabbos is Isid Rabbonin. So telling a guy to write for you on Shabbos should be an Isid Rabbonin. But you should bear to Israel like Gazir Rabbonin. Because you have a chance to buy, a purchase, a property in Israel, the Rabbonin suspended the, the, the Amir al Akim to telling the guy to write the, the Shtar. And therefore, if a, a piece of land in Syria comes up for sale, and the only time you can purchase the land is on Shabbos, you're allowed to ask a guy to write the, the document, because the, the, the sale document, because Syria does have a Kedusha on it. Tanar Abonim. Evet Shehevi Gita. Now, we know that if you bring a get, you have from Chutz Laaretz. So therefore, the Chachamim gave a belief to the, per, to the woman, or to the Shliach, to say, and it becomes a kosher get. But that's only on a on a uh, get, a freedom get, like a, a get that's making the woman to be able to marry somebody else. Or let's say a slave get also gets a get to go free. So if he gets a get that his master sent him a get from Chuslaretz, the 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 the, the could say befani nechtem, befani nechtem, and and the, and it's a kosher get, and therefore the evid would go free. But let's say there's a bill of sale. Let's say a person had a, uh, sent a document that he's selling something to somebody. So then it's not a verified document unless you have two Adem that say that it was that it's, it's valid. The, this din that a shliach is believed like two people is only by get, but not by a purchase, not by a sale, an event sale, like a land sale. So the Gemara brings a price. It says like this, turn around bottom. Evet shehevi gitai. A Evid that brought his own get shichrer for from Chutzlar to Eretz Yisrael, and it doesn't take effect until he gets to Eretz Yisrael. So he brings his own get, and it says that you go free, my man, because the boy atzmecha unuchusai knuyelach. He had a very nice master, and the master said, "You can go free, and all my possessions now belong to you." So there's two parts to the star: one that the Evid goes free; the other now the Evid is gifted all the possessions of the master. So when he says, he gets to go free, but the, the, the possessions, the items, he doesn't get. Because the items, you really need to aid them to validate that star. So it, it actually, it works, you, you, you divide it in half. It works, the part that he goes free is valid with his the part that says that he gets to keep the possessions as a gift, you will need two other Adem to, to um, make this, to authenticate this document. But he will not be believed. Iboilu. So I'm going to ask a question. What happened in one statement, the rabbi, the, the, the statement on the star says, all my possessions belong to you. So included in that expression, all my possessions belong to you, is in one sentence, the master wrote, that basically you should go free and all my possessions should be gifted to you. Maho, what would be that case? Would the Evid be believed and you would not need to aid them to authenticate the get? Amar Abaya, Abaya said, because he goes free, then he gets to keep the possessions. Okay, so by him saying, this was my star, I saw it being written, we believe him. And automatically, since it's one statement, not like before, where it's two statements, it's one statement that includes the possessions. So then, Kanan Achasim, he gets to keep the possessions. Amal, it's because he himself is trusted to authenticate this get, this star. Amal lay Rava. So Rava said, Bishlam Atzim Likna. I understand for himself, he should be able to go free. Vidi have a get Isha. Just like any get Isha, you believe one person to authenticate a get. So you believe the Eve to authenticate his own get Shikra, his own freedom get. He shouldn't be able to keep the possessions. Because every time you want to authenticate a get, of authenticate a star, you need two people. So, uh, so therefore, you need two people. So then, uh, so then, uh, he's not believed. Ahadar Rabbi so Rabbi retracted. Rabbi said, we, we, it's either all or nothing. Because he can't get keep the possessions. We're not going to trust him to go free either. 
you're going to have to get two people to authenticate this get because it's one statement, calling the chasai knuyalach, which includes the Evid. So all his possessions belong to the Evid. But since he cannot, uh, uh, he's not trusted to be, to authenticate the part that of the possessions, he's not trusted to authenticate the part that, uh, that allows him to go free. Amalei Rava, Rava says, no, that doesn't make sense either. Bishlam and Nechassam lay niknei, we shouldn't allow him to keep the possessions, midi yavakim shtaris to alma. Because it's every time you need to authenticate a get, you need two people. Any, any star, any document, you need two people to authenticate it. Let him be, uh, let him be trusted that he should go free. Midi to have a get isha, because of a get isha. Just like a get isha, you trust one person to authenticate it, a shliach. So you could trust him to authenticate the part of the star that means that he goes free. Ella Amar Rava, Rava says it like this. Echadzeh, the echadzeh, whether both cases, atzmai kana, nechasim le kana. Whether he say atzmacha or nechasei knuyulach, you divide it. Or he said kol nechasei knuyulach, you just divide it in half. Atzmai kana, he gets to go free. Chasim le kana, he doesn't get to keep the possessions. Because Rava says you can just split up his words. Even though he wrote it in one sentence, called the Chasei Knuyalaka, Rava holds you can split one statement into two parts. And therefore, the part that allows him to go free, he's believed to authenticate it. And the part that that gets allows him to keep all the possessions of the owner, of the master, will not allow that to happen unless there's two other people that come to authenticate the, the star.